Materials This tutorial shows how to use materials in Lumion, and how to configure them. First, start Lumion, and then click one of the new empty scenes. Click the Import Mode button on the left and click the plus sign to import a model. Click the palette icon to start assigning materials. There are many types of materials in Lumion. First, we will start with the landscape material. Click the plus sign to add a new material definition. Select the portion of the model you want to apply the landscape material to. Next, click the landscape material icon in the material list on the left. The landscape material allows you to seamlessly blend parts of your model with the landscape. After applying the landscape material, hit the OK button on the right, so we can see how the model blends with the landscape. Make sure the model intersects the landscape by moving the model down, like this. Now switch to landscape mode to see the effect of the landscape on the model. Click the paint icon in landscape mode to start painting soil types. Try painting different soil types on the landscape. The material you just assigned, blends nicely with the landscape underneath. Go back to input mode. Click the palette icon and click the object. Click the plus sign and click one of the other pieces of your model. This time assign the, color, material type. The color material type, allows you to assign, a solid color to parts of your model. Use the R, G, and B sliders to change the red, green and blue components of the material color. The depth offset slider, allows you to offset the depth of parts of your model. You can use this feature to force materials either behind or in front of other materials. This feature is also available in other material types and allows you to tweak materials to remove glitches. Note, that material changes in Lumion, are completely reversible. You can always get back to your original imported material by deleting a material assignment. Double click the trash can icon to delete the material, and revert the material back to its imported state. Click the plus sign, to add a new material. Click any part of the model that already has a texture on it. Next. Click the, standard, material type in the material library. This material type, automatically generates texture coordinates or you can use the imported texture coordinates. If you drag the first slider, you can see how the scale of the mapping changes. A scale of zero switches the material to use imported texture coordinates. This allows you to use all features of the material type while using your own texture coordinates and textures. The second slider on the left, called Roughness, allows you to alter the lighting gradient of the material. A bigger roughness results in quicker fall-off of the lighting. Very often, materials reflect more of their environment at grazing angles. The third slider, on the left, allows you to tweak the reflection fall-off. Before we can see this effect we first need to look at some of the other sliders. On the right side, you can see a bump slider. If your imported model has multiple textures, you can use this slider to increase, or decrease the bumpiness. Of course your model needs to have a normal map as a second texture, before the bump slider becomes of any use. Make sure the bump slider is set at zero when you are not using a bump map. The second slider on the right allows you to increase reflectivity of the material. Drag this slider all the way to the right, to make the material reflective. Now look at the Fernell reflection slider again on the left. If you increase the Fernell reflection you can see how the fall-off of the reflection is changing. 
reduce reflection strength to zero before we continue with the rest of the material settings. On the right the Fernal Shade slider allows you to create highlights or darkening at grazing angles. This is almost similar to the Fernal Reflection but this slider lightens or darkens the surface at grazing angles. The fourth slider on the left, allows you to alter the brightness of the material. The fourth slider on the right, allows you to control the emissiveness of materials. At high values, materials start to glow, when the bloom post-process effect is turned on. Bloom is covered in tutorial number 7. The last slider on the bottom left allows you to control the sharpness of reflections. Dragging this slider to the left makes materials less shiny and dragging it to the right makes materials more shiny. If you look closely, you can see three buttons at the bottom right. These buttons allow you to select different subsections of the material settings. Up until now, we covered all the sliders in the first section. If you click the second button you see two buttons that allow you to replace textures. When you replace a texture your oil texture is not lost. You can simply double click the trash can icon to revert back to the original texture. The third button on the right, gives access to additional settings of the material. Heading, pitch and bank allow you to rotate the texture mapping. X, Y and Z allow you to offset the positions of the texture mapping. The top left slider, allows you to offset the depth of the material, and functions similar to the slider of the color material we covered earlier. Let's look at some more material types. Click the light map material type. This material is for importing models which contain a light map. A light map is a texture which contains the amount of light and shadow for each part of your model. This material has sliders that allow you to tweak the depth, amount of light of the light map and amount of ambient light. Take a look at this example. The nice thing about light maps is you can use complex calculations for generating the light map. Light maps are also perfect for rendering indoor lighting at night. A light map is a texture generated in a modeling package containing the lighting for your model. Baking lighting into a light map is an easy way to get realistic lighting in real time. The drawback of light maps is that the lighting is static. You have to load a different light map if you want different lighting. Click the plus sign to add a new material. Click a surface on your model. This time, click the glass material type. We will quickly go through all the settings of the glass material type. The texture influence slider controls how much the glass is colored by the material texture. Reflection, controls the amount of reflection. Reflection for Renel, controls the amount of reflection fall off at grazing angles. The reflection minimum slider, controls the minimum amount of reflection. Highlight sharpness controls the sharpness of the sun's reflection. The sun either reflects as a sharp highlight, or a dull reflection. The highlight slider, allows you to increase or decrease the intensity of the reflected sun. On the right you see hue, saturation and value. The value slider, allows you to modify the translucency of the glass. A low value will turn the glass into opaque black, and a high value allows you to make everything behind the glass brighter. Let's continue with some of the other material types. To completely remove parts of the model you can choose the invisible material. Click the plus sign to add one more material. Click the water plane in the pool or any other surface you want to transform into water. Select the water material. 
The water material can turn any plane in your Model E to a water plane. Until now we always selected basic materials, but there are many predefined materials. The predefined materials have textures, bump maps and pre-configured settings. You can click any of the predefined materials, and modify the settings or textures according to your own preferences. The predefined materials are arranged into categories like wood, metal, bricks and tiles. The last thing to show, is the reload model feature. The reload button is next to the OK button on the right. Clicking the reload button will re-import your model. This simple feature is very powerful in practice. It keeps all material settings intact while reloading any changes to the geometry of the model. Look what happens if I change the model in SketchUp, export and then reload the model. The chairs have moved while all material modifications are still intact. Congratulations! You now know how to configure materials in Lumion.